you're always getting that dog all messed up. Grace, Papa's got to start cooking. You won't get no gizzards. You keep messing up the rug, okay? You got to get out the gizzard. Okay? Have them right here in this bag. They're trying to leak on them so they were defrocked. Yeah. You behave. Let's see if we got everything. Yep, I believe we did. Oh, come on. Hey, y'all! Come on in! Grace, I thought you would do better. I thought you would let Papa know we got the people coming. Right there. So, go up and get them and bring them on in, okay? You're okay. Gracie, you ain't no better than Trix, are you? No, you aren't. You didn't even let old Papa know. And Trix is probably fast asleep. Yep. You're supposed to tell Papa when the people show up, okay? Okay. Stay down there. Well, I'm glad to see y'all again over here in the country kitchen. And that, and we're going to be cooking up some good grub tonight. It's pork boat food. Yep. From back in the day, and many of y'all can remember it, many may not, some of you may not like it, then you've never had it the way old Mr. Tom fixes it. Trust me, when I'm done with this, it'll be Trixie, Gracie, and the kitty crew approved, and I ain't ever had nobody say it wasn't downright delicious. But that's just me here in the deep south. So, come on, and let me show you what all you'll need, and let's get this started. With Gracie at my feet. <laughs> Gracie, I'm already having to shuffle my feet, so I'm going to step on you. We're cooking now. You can help out later, okay? Okay. So, like always, you're going to need a few things. So what are you going to need? Well, for gizzards and gravy, you're going to need some gizzards right here in this here shopping bag and in a nice Ziploc freezer bag. That we got some gizzards right here that we froze. Back on the 28th of November 2019 we did. Right there they are, those luscious little taste delights. Yep. Yeah. It's about a pound. Well, you know, it could be a little more, could be a little less. Well, you can use a pound and a half if you want to. But that's going to be the main meat of the day. And if you're not familiar with gizzards and all the benefits, let me tell you about them just real quickly, okay? You see, gizzards are fairly low calorie. And, you know, they're high in protein low in fat yep and they've got depending on the serving size and that they got their high in zinc iron selenium which you need phosphorus potassium and vitamin b12 and you all know how important that is and niacin you get all that in those delectable delights. Yes, you do. And it's very dense, nutritious meat. Yep. Now, I know many of you are going to say, I don't like the taste or I don't like the texture. Well, that's what I'm here to show you. It just don't got to be that way, folks. It really don't. As always, you got to spice it up some, don't you? Yep. But, we also got to have some fresh ingredients. And like always, onion. Got to have at least one large. Got to have us some fresh garlic if you got it. If not, you can use that there pickled stuff in the jar. I guess it comes in water too nowadays. I prefer fresh. Now, 
as we go through the seasonings, you're going to be asking the question. But I'll, I'll hold on. One of the main players, it's going to be poultry season. Everybody knows that's number one seasoning for chicken. Even gizzards. You're going to need some garlic powder. Now, you wonder, I'm sure this is where a question going to come up. What do I need garlic powder for if I got garlic bread well I'm going to show you why or at least why I do it you're going to need some onion powder the same it's true during part of this here process remember I'm an engineer not only a cook and a chef you're going to need the onion powder too and later on in the process you need fresh garlic and your fresh onion. Well, at least that's the way I do it. You don't got to do it that way. And then, you're going to need some Italian seasoning. Oh, yeah. This makes it all the more better. Because it's got all those great ingredients in it that go so well with chicken. Margarine, thyme, rosemary, sage, savory, oregano, and basil. All wrapped up in the one. And, of course, black pepper. You can grind it your own if you want to. I just use it out of the box. It'll be fine. Of course, you're going to need some salt. Yep. As well as something to spice it up if you want to. This is optional. But, it's an option I'm going to take. I'm going to, since it's cold and chilly, I'm going to heat it up a little. Not a lot. Just a touch of warmth with this slap your mama. Oh, yeah. Cajun seasoning it is. You're going to need also some chicken bouillon. Or you can use your homemade or store-bought chicken stock if that's what you want to do. But now I'm going to cook it just like mama did, grandma and great-grandma. We're going to use the bouillon. And then here's one of the secret ingredients. Ooh, yes. Yellow mustard. Because it just wouldn't be tasty, warm, and tangy gizzards, gravy, and taters without the tang of mustard. And you're going to need some flour. It can be all purpose, or it can be. Whatever kind you like ain't gonna make no difference. Now we're gonna be making this today the way my mama made it, and you can eat it over taters, mashed, smashed, roasted, whatever you want to do. Or you can ladle it over some rice or noodles. Yeah, sure can. But this is one of the ways mama did it when she wanted to make it the main dish star of the show and that's what i'm doing tonight comes back to being basically a one pot wonder and us old bachelors we love cutting down on the dishes yes we do and of course you're gonna need a pot which i forgot to get out but you'll see a cutting board and a nice sharp knife and some measuring spoons as always so there we have it and if i ever forgot anything because I don't got this rope down, I will call it out as we put it all together. Right, Gracie? you just going to be right there, right beside Papa, waiting to help, aren't you? Yes, you are. You ready? I know you are. Stay down there, though. Can't get on the counter. Okay? Okay, y'all, the first step that I do is I rinse my gizzards. You know, I took them out of that there Ziploc bag. And there was a lot of blood and other things in there, okay? And I put them in a bowl. I fill the bowl with water. Don't get crazy, you know, with your water. That way you don't splash it all over your sink and counters and all that and get, you know, that salmonella all the youngins are all worried about. And then you drain it off. And you do that a time or two. 
to get all the stuff you don't want. You know, like the blue, fat and all that. And other, you know, things. They throw in those packages. Then you fill it up water again. Cold water. Swervely filtered, you know. Right here from the old uh, pure filter. And I always dump a tablespoon of salt in there. And I let them set and rest a minute or two. Well, I get everything ready. I get out of the rest of the stuff I forgot. You know. Like cutting board, knife, and the pot. And all that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get these on into the pot. And we're going to start making the best, most delicious gizzards on the face of the plant. So as you can see, we've transferred those gizzards from that bowl in the sink where they were soaking, you know, with that salty water, one tablespoon of salt. And got them in our nice little pot right here. Oh yeah. Now we're going to add some water. Just enough to cover. Got a measuring cup. May not have said that. The reason I got a measuring cup so how much I put in there. So I know how many bouillon cubes to put in there. Because one bouillon cube for one cup of water. Oh yeah. That's fact. First one. One. And second one. Okay. The third one. The fourth one. Yep. And just for grins and giggles, I'm going to put in a fifth one. And see, they're all nicely covered. Oh, yeah. Yep. I got the water in there. Now we're going to add the bouillon cubes. We are. Now you can use any brand you want. I'm using the Wilders. And I'm going to drop five of them in there, okay? I ain't going to count it out like I did the water. You just have to trust me. Number five. Yes, sir. We got them all in there now. All five of them, as you saw. Now, I know some of y'all going to say that ain't necessary. You put one, two, three, or four, whatever you like. Or, like I said, use your own chicken stock. Homemade or store-bought. Don't make no difference. And that, but I use bouillon cube. But the one secret there is, understand there's a lot of sodium in bouillon cube. That's why y'all, I tell y'all, taste what you're going to be doing before you add any extra salt. Trust me. So now what do we got to do? Well, we got to turn on the old burner. And we're going to fire that baby up, aren't we, Gracie? To about a five for right this moment. And we're going to start adding in some spices. Because now is the time we want to make sure there's flavor in that there uh, pan cooking those gizzards. Yes, we do. And it'll all be there for the gravy and taters later. So we're going to put us in. Yep, because there's going to be taters involved in this too, guys and girls. We're going to put us in one teaspoon that poultry season oh yeah you see what you're gonna see with these spices is is it gets rid of that one complaint people have I don't like to taste the gizzards just like I don't like tasting liver well the way I do it people love my liver okay and now we're gonna put in some garlic powder Yep. Of course, my garlic powder has got all hard down in there again. And we're going to fake it. And we're going to put us in what we feel is about one tablespoon. Close enough. See, you don't got to be real accurate. You don't even got to have this. You just put in whatever you like, taste it. And, you know, I would say taste it. Once the gizzards are cooked, not right now, raw. And put that one tablespoon of garlic powder. Next thing we're going to put, sneak on in there is the onion powder. Oh, yeah. 
we're gonna put some of that in there of course it done got all hard on me uh let me dig it out but it's gonna be one tablespoon okay trust me yep i had to break it up a little bit keeps getting hard on me down here in the deep south okay so one tablespoon see mole's better less may be okay that's where that taste testing comes in okay so next up is our italian seasoning yeah we're gonna throw that on in there and it is real important guys we're gonna put this one teaspoon in there put all this in while you're cooking up your gizzards don't wait till you're making the gravy because you want to fuse all this goodness into those delectable gizzards you surely do now for a little of that their uh, pure ground black pepper half a teaspoon that's what I like if you don't put in a quarter taste your finished product like I'm always telling you and last but least or not least just slap your mama now you can use some of that there Tony Chacheries but these all come from great state of Louisiana they do this is from La Plate yeah I know it well and we're gonna put us in about half a teaspoon hard to get it on out of here that's just gonna give us a little bit of warmth and see as these cook up you know that five cups of water there is going to reduce yep and that's where making the gravy it's really going to come into play as well as cooking up the potatoes and i'll guarantee you you ain't ever seen gizzards gravy and potatoes cooked this way not never not once you are going to be surprised so there you have it that's what you want right now and you're going to bring this up this water with those gizzards and all those lovely spices to a simmer with a lid on it and you're going to let it sit here and simmer for two hours yep and then you're going to take one of them there tenderness checkers you know kitchen pork and you're going to stick them you want them to be pork tender just right at that almost falling apart stage you do and then we can proceed to the next stage of this delectable dish okay y'all they've been going for not two hours because i went ahead and checked them at two and they weren't quite as tender as i wanted them to be they were still a little bit chewy and of course kitties didn't mind but I did and that's the second thing most people don't like about eating gizzards they don't like the texture the chewiness of the meat so I decide to kick them up another hour so here we are at three hours simmering nice and low now you might wonder while that's necessary to simmer them nice and low we remember all those spices we put in in the beginning before we got these things cooking here on the burner well it's those spices that impregnate those gizzards and get rid of that number one complaint and that is i don't like the taste but if you go ahead and you're in a hurry and you throw it up to boil it a rapid boil oh yeah you can cook your gizzards way faster, but they won't be infused with all those spices and herbs that we threw in this pot. So let's give them a check right now, after three hours, and see how they are. Hold on. Woo, hope that didn't fog y'all's glasses up. Woo, it's smelling good in this kitchen. Let me tell you it is. And just for y'all, got me out a nice little plate. And we're going to take one out right there. See it right there? Look at that thing. 
Now, another thing is they say we eat with our eyes. A lot of people don't like the way they look. And we're going to take care of that a little bit later. But you want to take one of these calibrated testers, you know, fork. You want to stick it on in there. You don't want to press much. Yeah, light pressure. Goes right on in there. No problem. And we'll just cut that one in half. Right down the middle. Because it's that middle membrane that's the toughest. Didn't take no pressure at all. So this one's, as well as the others in this pot, are now good to go. So we're ready to go to the next stage of the process of making the best gizzards and gravy on the face of the earth. So what we're going to do now, we're going to get us a bowl and that. And we're going to fish these gizzards out of this because the next stage is where we infuse some flavor into the potatoes like what you've never seen. So we've got us a bowl. Now all we're going to do, we're going to reach on in here and we're going to fish out those gizzards right there Ooh, and this smell is making me hungry you just cannot believe how this smells don't worry about what it looks like we're going to take care of that complaint here in a bit we still got some cooking to do Yes, we do. And I got Trixie and Gracie all over the floor in the kitchen. Because they can't wait to get a hold of these either. <laughs> They've already had one. So we got them all out of that nice flavored and seasoned broth. And we're going to let them cool. Because we got to come back. We got to cut them up into the size that we want in our gravy. And whatever size you want, that'll be up to you. I'll show you as we go along. I know. It's a process. I'm an engineer. But it's darn fine when it's finished. So now, we're ready to make this dish special. And you've seen me do this with noodles. And if you want to eat your gizzard gravy over noodles, you can do what I'm about to do. Because it will infuse all the goodness of the gizzards and all those spices into those noodles. As it will these potatoes. Oh yeah. So what we're going to do. You know we took those gizzards out of here. Now what we're going to do. Is we're going to drop our taters in there. And we're going to cook them. And all that gizzard and spices and herb goodness right there. And I'm going to tell you what. It's going to make these potatoes so darn tasty. You may not even want the gizzard gravy. You just may want to eat the taters. Trust me. And we're going to put our little old lid on. Kick our burner up to about a five on the old stove, let her come up to a little bowl, give them about 15-20 minutes, here again, till they're pork tender, check them, we're going to take them out, and that's going to be our mashed taters, mashed and smashed, that that delicious gizzard gravy is going to be topping it with, so hold on, we'll be back. Oh, timer went off. Time to check those potatoes there, isn't it? Woo, we had them on a low boil right there for old 15 minutes. We're going to get out the plate so y'all can see. We're going to grab one right here. We're just going to take that fork 
Put, oh yeah. There we go. Perfect. Yep, fork tender. This splits apart. We're good to go. Now what we gotta do is get them on out of here. And what will now be our gravy. Woo, and I'm gonna tell you. Cooking your uh, potatoes there and all that uh, gizzard and spices and herb goodness is going to make them so darn tasty. Like I say, you may not even want to have the gizzards. You might not. So we're going to get them all on out of here. And we're going to make us up some mashed and smashed taters. Now this video ain't about the taters. So, you know, I ain't got the time to show you that too while we're getting this here gravy all going. The potatoes are not the star of the show. They're the co-star. Oh yeah. And it doesn't matter. Ooh, they're getting a little hot that metal bowl is. Good thing I can clean up the stove because I've made a big mess for sure. And we fish out as many as we can. Because then we leave, this is going to make that user gravy all the more better. See that starch and potato goodness adds to the body of the stock that will become our gravy. Ooh, and look at them. All full of herbs and spices. These are going to be nice. And all we're going to do is we're going to add, oh, a couple of tablespoons of uh, salted butter and enough milk to make them as creamy as we want them to be. And hard. If you want to see that video, I'll do one. Show you how I make my seasoned potatoes. <laughs> they are tasty all on their own, even when the gizzards are said and gone. So what we got going on now, folks, we got those potatoes over rest. Yes, we do. And now, see what we've done? I'm not sure y'all can see it real good. We've taken those gizzards and we've chopped them up to a little quarter to three-eighths pieces. Yep. And we're going to add them back in to that... Uh, fine stock that we got right there that we cooked them in and also cooked our taters in yep we'll add them right on in there right back to it there we go now we'll give it a little stir now you might be wondering when's the fresh onion and garlic come into play well now is the time and what I did while the gizzards were cooking I chopped up a half of that large onion and four small cloves of fresh garlic I did and we're gonna add them and you might wonder well why didn't I put that in there instead of using garlic powder and onion powder when I was cooking up the gizzards. Well, you could do that. But you see, if you uh, put your onion and garlic in all that ahead of time, by the time the gizzards get done, by the time you make this fabulous gizzard gravy, your onions will virtually almost disappear, as will the garlic. Now, I like a little bit of texture in my gravy okay so that's why I do it like this if you don't want to you don't have to mmm so all we gotta do now is put the old lid up back on it and we're gonna let those onions and garlic simmer on low till they get pork tender I'm thinking about 20-30 minutes and we'll come back and check them if they're good to go. 
and we're ready to finish this gravy and start our meal and I sure am hungry <laughs> so let's set a timer we'll set it for 20 minutes come back and check it I don't know if I'll have y'all with me I might just you know if it's got to go longer than 20 I'll bring you back when we know they're right I'm thinking 20 30 minutes what y'all think So y'all know, we dropped in those onions and that garlic, or garlic, and that, and like always, not that I need to know, but y'all might, we're going to take a few out here, and that, and uh, of course we got a gizzard there, we don't want to do that, a little bit ready, a little slim on them, you know, and we're going to put them right there on the plate just for y'all. So you can see, we're going to take our fork, slides right through it like butter. Yep. So they're ready to go after 30 minutes. Hmm, tastes good. Oh, yeah. And see, they still have a little bit, just a touch, of texture left. Yep. So we're going to put a little lid on that. Turn that down to low on the burner. And now we're getting ready to thicken this up and make it gravy. So let me show you how to do that. So you don't got lumps like mama used to have. Now her gravies were always fantastic tasting. But they were lumpy. Yep. So we're over here and we got us a little bowl. Okay. Now this is how I do it. You may not do it this way, okay? Got some measuring spoons, because that's just what I do. And that, and let me get a little bit of purified water going on over here. Because I believe in it. And, got us a little one cup of purified water. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our all-purpose flour. But it don't got to be all-purpose. It'd be self-rising. It ain't gonna matter none. Trust me, it won't. And we're gonna take our one tablespoon measuring spoon. And we just gonna take one tablespoon. Boom. We're gonna take the second one. Boom. And for good measure, we're gonna take a third. Now these are level tablespoons. Yep. Now. Let me tell you something about this. And all of y'all experienced cooks out there, I know most of my ladies that watch the channel way better cooker than I am. They already know all this. And then we're going to take a cup of uh, room temperature tap water. And we're just going to pour on in there in that little bowl. Then we're going to take this mixer. I think the French call it a whisk. Of course, you can take a fork. And we're just going to whisk that in. Yep, we sure are. Whisk it up where it's nice and uh, incorporated. Yep. No lumps. And if it's not, your tap water ain't warm enough, you might want to get it up there to about, oh, 90 to 100, 110. You can see. Ain't no lumps in it, okay? Trust me. This always makes perfect gravy. Now, sometimes I use four tablespoons. Sometimes only two. You gotta judge the liquid in your pot. And if you put too much flour in and your gravy gets too thick, well, add some water, youngs. And that. But whatever you do, if it's too thin, don't be pouring no flour in that hot liquid. No. No. If you want to add some more, add a little water. Dump some flour in. Mix it up with a fork or a whisk like I'm doing. And add it in. Or, if it's too thin, you just cook it a little longer. And it'll thicken up. Trust me, it will. Now, 
we're going to add this in to that wonderful gizzard gravy right now. Okay. Yep. And we got sitting here simmering low. And we're just going to take that stirred up flour and water and we're just going to pour it on in there but we swirl this around ever so slow oh yeah see that now you may be one of those that says well I don't even deal with that I use that cornstarch well you go right ahead. If you like that slicky finish of cornstarch, more power to you. Back when I was younger, I did it too. And I was often wondered why my uh, gravy didn't have that there down home, homemade taste, you know, like back in the day. That's because I know of four generations of my family, I never seen none of the ladies ever use no cornstarch there's always flour whether they were thickening gravy like this in a pot or whether they were sprinkling it on top of meats and fat you know like when I make my hamburger gravy or my sausage gravy and then you're just going to stir this on up and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to bring it up to a low boil and this is the important part you want to cook that flour because you don't want no gravy tasting like flour do you you want it to taste just like mama made it back in the day and this will trust me that so let's kick it up to about a five on my burner and get it Coming to a boil. Yep. I mean, the smells in this house. Simply amazing. And we ain't even put the sides all together yet. Oh, yeah. You don't think old Mr. Tom's gonna just have the world's best gizzards and gravy and taters without a couple more sides. But it's gonna be just down home food. You know, poor folk food. Okay? So we'll let that sit there and uh, be coming up to heat in a slow boil and thicken up right before our eyes. So y'all, we've been letting this here uh, cook off to a nice slow boil after we added that flour and water mixture in. And that, let it thicken on up. And you want to make sure you Put a little bowl in that. Cook that flour. If you don't want that floury taste in your gravy. Now I've tasted it for seasoning, spices, and salt. Now I'm not going to put any extra salt in there. Now the salt we initially put in that was in the Slap Your Mama and in the Bouillon Cubes made it just fine and tasty for me. And, that. and I can just tell by the way the bubbles coming to the surface and sounding. Sort of got that pop, pop, pop. It's going to be just fine. And here's pro tip. And I know all you ladies out there know this. As your gravy cools, what happens? It gets thicker. So we're going to turn that burner off. Yes, we are. And we're going to let her sit. Yes, we are. We'll let her cool down some. Well, we'll get our other couple of sides going. We got them in pots there heating up. Ain't nothing fancy, trust me, once you see them. We're talking everyday American citizen poke poke food here. May not be gourmet, but it's going to be tasty. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. And guess what? I can eat off my wood spoon and stick it back in there again 
Because ain't but old Mr. Tom here anyway. Like, who's going to care? I don't mind eating after myself. And we're going to let this cool on down. And then I'll show you what we got. And we'll get this all plated up and have us a fine dinner tonight. Y'all grab a plate, pull up chair in the dining room, enjoy it with me. So y'all, we've turned the heat off, as you saw, and we've let that gravy cool down a bit. And like always, it's going to thicken on up some. It'll thicken up a whole lot more as it cools. And I know that. And you'll learn that over time. Here again, gets too thick for you. Add some water. We're going to go ahead and plate up a meal because it's getting late. And old Mr. Tom, and you can't see Gracie down here in the floor. Let me show you. There's Gracie laying on a rug right in front of the stove waiting for hers. Yep. The Princess Gracie or Princess Grace. Yep. Right there. So what are we having with it? Well, we're going to have a little canned spinach right there yeah told you it's poor folk food and over here we got some of that there sweet kernel corn canned also it is what it is like i said it's real poor folk food so we're gonna get this all plated up and we'll come back and do a taste test on the gizzard gravy and taters. So, first up to bat on the plate is our amazing flavor infused mashed and smashed potatoes right here. Yep, that was cooked. And that there uh, giblet broth, all seasoned up it was. We're going to put some on a nice portion there. Shove it over to the side. On our for real china, from china. Put a little wells in it there to hold that gravy. Yep. We are. And we're just going to cover it on up. Stick her back in the toaster oven. Sit a while. Okay? Now, a little bit of that there. Canned sweet corn. Look at that. Looks pretty. And if you're worried about food shortages and all that, you better be stocking up. And stuff like the old canned corn. Looks tasty to me. Maybe not to you. It might be one of those ones that gotta have all organic and fresh. I lived my whole life eating this stuff. I ain't died yet. Oh yeah. We'll put a little more in there. And, like I told you, we got us some warmed over, nice pie pie canned spinach. Yep, sure do. Right there, we're just going to let her drain a minute. Ooh, I love spinach. Good stuff. My grandmother and great-grand used to make this. And they do a tablespoon or two of vinegar. They'd boil up some eggs before they gave it to us. They'd throw it in a big bowl and slice up a bunch of eggs on top. So everybody got at least you know, a slice of egg. And that was good eating. I didn't go to all that trouble. Woo. There we go. Looking good, ain't it? And of course now, what we've been cooking. Woo, that giblet gravy. Yes, sir. 
we're going to get us some right here. And like I say, if it ain't thick enough for you, y'all just cook it down a little more. Yes, sir. Yeah, look at that. Like I showed you, Gracie was all over it, waiting for it. Of course, like always, since I did all this, I didn't make no biscuits cornbread. I'm just too tuckered out for all that. But uh, it's done. Now we're just going to give it a little seasoning. Well, and spinach and corn, a little salt and pepper, you know. Maybe a little slap your mama. Just add a little heat to it. And then we're going to take it on in the den. And we're going to enjoy. Yep. But, like always, i got to do a taste test. Yep. So, come on. Let me show you what it tastes like. Oh, that's a nice looking plate. I don't care what you say. So, y'all. We're going to get us a little fork full of uh, taters and giblets right here. See it? Right there. Oop, made a mess. We'll clean that up. <laughs> Let's give it a taste test, okay? Mmm. <laughs> Oh my, that is tasty, flavorful, and those gitters are so tender, you don't even need to have your store-bought teeth in to chew them up. Oh my, that is good. Well, y'all, I got to sit down and eat, take her on in the den. You may watch some YouTube. Don't know. But I do hope y'all enjoyed the video. I do hope you'll enjoy the recipe. And I do hope you'll try it one time. Especially if you don't care for gizzards. I think you'll be presently surprised. Like always, I'll have the ingredients in the description below the video. So until I, Trixie, Gracie, and the kitty crew see you again, y'all take care out there, stay safe, and God bless you, your family, and loved ones. Until next time, goodbye for now.